reduced to skin and bone, trapped in their tiny cages in the blazing Mozambique sun, slowly starving to death for seven months. This was the fate of the animals with the Akef Egyptian Circus, before the animal defenders moved in to rescue every single animal. Six lions, three tigers, an African python, five dogs and three horses. For six years, El Said Hussein Akef peddled his circus all over Africa, dogged by persistent allegations of cruelty and defective or missing animal permits. As he traveled, he mysteriously gained or lost animals. Chimpanzees, African gray parrots, pythons and other protected species all passed through his hands. In November 1995, the circus arrived in Mozambique, setting up in the center of Maputo for a one-month stay. Then, in January 1996, Akef left, saying that he was going to arrange passage for the circus back to Egypt. He never returned. Money ran out, and by June the animals were starving. In July, Raj, one of the tigers, died. A concerned local businesswoman, Mrs. Eleanor Sun, purchased food for the animals and arranged veterinary attention. She sent out an international SOS to animal welfare organizations, reaching Tusk Force, a UK-based conservation group, in early August, who immediately passed the job to the animal defenders. A storm of telephone calls and faxes commenced between the London offices of animal defenders, Tusk Force, and Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, or CITES, contacts in Johannesburg and Geneva. Finally, Mozambique's head of anti-poaching issued a CITES confiscation order. And within days of being alerted, an animal defender's rescue team was on its way. On August the 15th, our rescue team arrived in Maputo, and the following morning met Mr. Sansao Bonito at the Ministry of Agriculture. Akef was promising to return and remove his circus, but there was still no sign of him. Therefore, Mr. Benito issued confiscation orders for all of the animals and handed them into our care. He then accompanied the team to the circus to notify the workers that the animals were under new management. It was decided that they would, under rescue team supervision, continue to care for the animals and train team workers in the animals' routine, ready for the journey to South Africa. Daytime cages for the lions and tigers were in the region of one meter by two meters. A lion or tiger could barely stretch out, and some had bed sores. The horses were pitifully thin. The mare had given birth in Maputo, but her milk had dried up. In two other small cages were the dogs, extremely friendly and despite everything looking in reasonable health. In another cage was the enormous African python, who was later named Murphy. The circus had arrived in Zimbabwe, the previous stop, with four pythons. Murphy was the only one to make it to Mozambique. There had been threats to kill the animals or anyone helping them, so our team were delighted when Bosoko Security, based in Maputo, generously offered guards to protect the animals and ensure the safety of anyone assisting the rescue bid. As the sun set, a ministry vet was busy checking and vaccinating the dogs and signing certificates to enable them to travel. When the smooth running operation was shattered by the arrival of Mr. Alex Barbosa. Alex Barbosa, a local nightclub owner, had sponsored the circus in Maputo and claimed Akhef had left owing him money. He was in the process of a legal action to seize Akhef's assets, including the animals. And significantly, all of the circus workers were afraid of him. Gradually, confrontation became negotiation. Finally, Barbosa was convinced that the animals were worthless. They would cost him and not make money. He would not obstruct the rescue. 
but produced a fax from Akif announcing that he would be arriving in Maputo on Monday. Throughout the operation, the rescue team faced the threat that outside factors such as Akef, Barbosa, a government department, the Egyptian embassy or other interference would bring the rescue to a stalemate and the Akef Egyptian circus would slip through the net again. Because of the delicate health of the animals, it was decided that the safest method of moving them was awake and in the container in which they had traveled all of their lives, loaded onto the back of a lorry. The dog cages were cut down to fit into the container above the lines. Johannesburg firm Scott's Transport offered the use of a flatbed lorry and driver free of charge, and Maputo Construction Company, Wade Adams, arranged free use of a crane and drivers to load the container. Over the weekend, the pressure was on to move fast. Mrs. Angie Neves and her helpers moved the horses, Butterscotch, Amber and Tigger, to the safety of Centro Hippico Riding School, where they were fed, washed, treated and put into their new stables. At least three animals were now safe. The removal of the horses sparked a furious response from Mr. Barbosa's wife, and all agreements were in tatters. The circus workers were now divided as to whether to obstruct or assist the rescue team, and a fist fight broke out. The team renegotiated with Barbosa, agreeing to purchase the lion and tiger container and film his nightclub in order to make him a celebrity. Four days after arriving in Maputo, the rescue bid was at full speed. Background details were taken of the animals revealing that most of the cats had been in these wretched cages for between 6 and 13 years. 12 or 13? Yeah. Import and export paperwork was frantically completed with the state vet and then faxed to South Africa to arrange import permits. Public liability insurance for the journey was arranged by our London office. The animals were prepared, but hours ticked by waiting for the crane. Finally, it arrived. And then came the news that the South African authorities had rejected some of the paperwork. The move was off, and the rescue team finished the day completely dispirited. The earliest date for the move would be Thursday the 22nd of August. Akef didn't show, but our team were told that he would be in Maputo the following day. Luckily, he never materialized. Two days after our false start, the team met Sensao Bonito at the Ministry of Agriculture for the last time. Our permits were in place, but he warned that political moves were afoot to halt the rescue. The team must leave Maputo before the city awoke the following day. At 5.30 a.m. the next morning, the lion and tiger container was prepared for the journey. The cats were loaded, and the outdoor cages dismantled as the sun rose over the site. The quiet morning punctuated by the clank of the cages being taken down for the last time. The python was taken from her cage and placed in a box, which was then sealed with a mosquito net. The dogs were loaded into their normal travelling cage. By 7am, the transport container was ready to go and was slowly winched up and lowered onto the lorry. All of the animals remained calm. After all, this was just like a normal moving day for them. But this time, their final destination was to be very different. At 8.30 a.m., the transporter rumbled into central Maputo. Hours later, with a great sense of relief, the rescue team convoy crossed the border and headed into South Africa, escorted by the state vet and other officials. Our convoy halted just inside South Africa. The dogs were handed to the SPCA for quarantine, and the lions and tigers were watered and sprayed with insecticide. And then it was back on the road for this epic journey to freedom, reaching the Hood Sprague Research and Breeding Centre for Endangered Species after dark. Friday, the 23rd of August, 1996, was the last day that the lions and tigers would wake up inside their bleak beast wagon. The veterinary team began work at 5.30 a.m. Each cat was darted and carried to the surgery for a battery of health checks and then flea sprayed. All were anemic and had low blood pressure. The team worked into the afternoon, finally carrying each animal to a bed of straw in their quarantine pens. 
For a week, we had seen these magnificent animals confined in their tiny cages, and now we were carrying them to freedom. Every waking hour for over a week had centered on rescuing these animals, often not knowing if our attempts would be thwarted, and now they were safe at last. Murphy, the python, was moved to Fitzsimmons Snake Park, where she now lives. The dogs have all been honed through the SPCA, and the horses are recovering well in Maputo. The lions and tigers had been kept in tiny cages or a beast wagon for years. They were imprinted and dependent on people, so they could not be released into the wild. It was our aim to find the best homes possible to ensure a peaceful retirement. Therefore, a detailed formal adoption process was established through our lawyers in Johannesburg, and applications were put before a panel of experts. During this process, it was realized that one of the lions bore all of the distinct characteristics of the extinct listed Barbary subspecies. The lion, called Akef, clearly the previous owner named the largest, most impressive looking lion after himself, has a huge black mane which runs past his shoulders and under his belly. It is hoped that our rescued lionesses are related to him. Once common throughout North Africa, Barbaries were first reduced in numbers by the ancient Romans, who took them for the Colosseum and similar arenas. Then, as the Arab communities north of the Sahara increased, they offered rewards to kill the lions, and they became increasingly rare. Others were taken for European circuses and zoos. The last wild Barbary in the world was shot by a hunter in Morocco in 1920, and they were then deleted from the World Encyclopedia of Animals. Hair samples have been taken from our rescued lion and lionesses and from a stuffed barbary at the British Museum. Scientists at Pretoria University are undertaking genetic tests on these, but confirmation of the genetic characteristics of the subspecies will require more animals. The animal defenders have therefore launched a worldwide search for barbaries. All of the rescued males, with the exception of the barbary, were given vasectomies to prevent breeding due to a shortage of good homes or wild habitat, and were then prepared for the move to the homes we had selected. In November 1996, a year after they had first travelled to Maputo, three lions were anaesthetised and loaded onto open trucks and driven to their new home at the Moholo Hollow Wildlife Rehabilitation Centre. They woke up the following morning in holding pens, and the animal defenders waited with bated breath as the doors were winched up and each lion took his first hesitant steps into the real world. The enclosures at Moholo Hollow are approximately half a hectare each with trees and natural bush vegetation. There is plenty of cover so that the animals can have as much privacy as they desire. The following night, the male Barbary, Akef, and two lionesses were anaesthetized and carried by lamplight into their enclosure at the Hood's Freight Research and Breeding Centre for Endangered Species. The lionesses were laid in the bush, and Akef was put in a small cage so that he could be introduced to the lionesses under supervision. The enclosure is a vast 12 hectares of bush with a water hole, and the animals are checked upon by roads through the enclosure. The following day, as the animal defenders team drove to the lion enclosure, they were greeted with the wonderful sight of one of the lionesses stretched across a dirt road, basking and blinking in the morning sun. Further into the enclosure, Akef was still in his cage with the other lioness lying just outside. The cage door was released and he strode out, proudly surveying his surroundings and inspecting the vehicles. In an interesting role reversal, the lion who had spent his life in a cage on the back of a lorry now paced around the vehicles looking at the humans inside before picking up a piece of meat and joining the lioness for a hearty breakfast. It is hoped that these animals will form a breeding group from which Barbary lions could eventually be returned to the wild. Next, the animal defenders team moved south to Pamula Game Lodge, where they were joined by a pair of inquisitive ostriches as they assessed the site for a new enclosure which would be built to our specifications. The tigers were moved in January at night. 
the only time cool enough to anaesthetise them safely. They were darted, given health checks, loaded, and a convoy set out from Hootsprade in a fierce thunderstorm at 11pm. Having driven all night and undertaking regular stops to check the sleeping cats, the convoy arrived at Pumula at 8am. The tiger crates were unloaded and the somewhat disorientated cats were released into their hospital enclosures. The three tigers will have one large enclosure, incorporating a swimming pool, cave and climbing platform. The circus has stolen the best years of all these animals' lives and their chance to be truly free. But now, at last, they can retire with peace and dignity. The Animal Defenders funded and coordinated this entire operation, and despite assistance from firms in South Africa and Mozambique, there were considerable costs, not least vets' bills and feeding nine very large cats. If you would like to send a donation or would like more information about our work, please contact the Animal Defenders. Please remember, we cannot continue to rescue animals and expose animal suffering without your help. Thank you.